What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ghetto back with another video. And today, I finally got my hands on Rip X. So I want to test it out and see what it's all about. And this is this is a real emotion right now. I'm not even holding y'all up. Now, mind you, I have never opened this plugin before. I have seen videos about it, other people using it, but this is my first time personally. So I want to see what it's all about. I do have a demo version. So if you want to find out what I find out, Follow me. Let's get it. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. This is Rip X, uh, Deep Remix, Deep Create. So um, I don't really know anything about this plugin pretty much. So we're going to explore it a little bit. I'm going back to my old faithful beat. I keep reusing it. It ain't old to me yet, so it ain't old to you yet. You're going to hear it. So I guess I just drag it and drop it in. And it's giving me a bunch of options. I ain't even going to mess with it. We're just going to click Rip. Wow, it says it's gonna take 10 minutes. That's a long time. So I guess I'll be back whenever it gets done. I do have other stem separation programs like Serato Studio. So it's gonna be interesting to see how well this holds up. And I'm assuming because Serato Studio does this pretty quick. If this is gonna take 10 minutes on my computer, which is a beast, then it has to be doing some extreme separation. And I hope it comes out sounding really good. At this point, I don't know, but I can't wait to see. So I'll be back in about nine minutes and we'll check out the results. All right, so it's finally done. It looks pretty interesting. I'm not sure exactly what that means yet. We are definitely going to find out. So I'm assuming that all of the stems are color coordinated according to whatever Rip X thinks they might be. I see yellow is voice. Red is piano. We got a little red. Guitar is light blue. There's some of that here and there. The bass is dark blue. Kick drums are white. Other drums are like a light blue color. Purple for the percussion. So let's go to the beginning. Let's isolate this piano, I think. I clicked on piano and it looked like the piano is highlighted. So if I play it, I'm wondering if I'm only going to hear piano. Okay, so that's still the whole beat right there. Let's see how we get, let's, okay, if I click the S. So now we got that piano solo. Now let's play it. I kind of don't like the way that sounds right there though, but this is a complicated sample and that's actually part of a guitar sample. Let's go back, let's solo the piano and the guitar because that actually is a guitar. Okay, so it's giving me what the chords are. That's actually pretty dope. All right, let's go back to the beginning and play it with the piano section and the guitar section solo. Okay, so this did really good with the bass. I like that a lot. Let's go back. We're going to try out kick drum. So the kick comes in right here. So let's see what it did with the kick. And this like the kick did pretty good too. So it does have, looking like it has the drum separated from the kick. I don't see anything for the drum, so we're going to skip past that for now. Percussion. A lot of percussion look like it's picked up. So I'm going to unsolo that kick. Let's see what we got. We should have snare drums, 
probably hi hats and all of that. That did a really good job too. <laughs> really good job on that. Sounds pretty clean also. I ain't really hearing a lot of artifacts on the bass. It was some, but not too much. It's definitely workable. And so I like what I got there. I'm still kind of iffy on the piano. I'm gonna go back to that. I want the piano. Give me the voice guitar everything that's not percussion that's what i want right now everything that's not percussion let me go to this vocal by itself <laughs> Now this is really, really good. Can you hear me There is very little artifacts in that vocal. Wanna check out, let me see. Yeah, I would definitely use that. Probably drop any sample in there. Use that to switch it up and make it sound crazy, then sample that and rechop it. I think that would be dope. That would be dope. You can come up with something crazy with that. Off top, I automatically know that I can use something like that to come up with something super crazy. So let's keep experimenting. Slide pitch.
like that. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it, but it is really interesting. I would play around with that. Just like, I feel like I could just play with that and just have fun with it. All right, now let me check out this last one, which is chords. See what it does by dragging it. All right, I can see that one would probably work best on a singular sample and then use it to turn that sample into a chord. I don't think it sounds good on a full beat like this, but that's okay though. That's okay. I can find some use cases for it. That probably wouldn't be my go-to, but the shift pitch, the slide pitch, invert pitch, even the expand pitch, I would definitely use those a lot just to experiment and try to come up with stuff because I like taking samples and turning it into something that people don't recognize and then using that for my beat production. I think it gives you a little bit more creativity over the sample than just taking a sample, putting it in a loop, layering some drums over it most of the time. I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes I do like to have a little bit more creativity when I'm sampling. Case in point, if you look at some of my sample based beats in the past, you see that I've taken these samples and completely demolished them to make whatever it was that I'm trying to make. And so now see we have more options. That was a pitch master. We have time master, level master, sound master, loops master, presets. All I did was explore the pitch master. It's still a lot of stuff that I can play around with. Wow, really? Wow. All right, so the first thing I got now that I'm looking at is the reverb. Let's see what it does. So after playing with this reverb slider a little bit, the first thing I noticed to me is it doesn't feel like you can make it too much. So even with the max amount of reverb, it didn't sound like it was overly destroying the sound. So I kind of like that. It kind of gives it a little more presence without being like too, too powerful. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. All right, let's check out this delay. I'm pretty sure this delay is going to get crazy. sounds pretty good to me too it does get a little overpowering if you take the delay and put it on what is the max it goes to eight you put it up to eight it does get to be a little bit too much but for the most part i think it sounds pretty good so i like the reverb or the delay also not the reverb I'm, i probably said reverb earlier i meant delay Ooh, okay. Now we can reverse the sample. And I do like reversing stuff sometimes. I don't know what this is going to sound like. Especially if I got it over, like I don't have a, a start and stop position. What is this going to reverse? Is it going to play backwards from the end? <laughs> I have no idea. Let's try it.
for this thing to be able to reverse the samples in real time like that, that is really, really crazy. On the fly though, on the fly as it goes, it's reversing these samples in real time. And it doesn't sound too bad. It doesn't sound too bad doing it. All right, so now we're gonna check out the warp time. All right, so basically that just speeds up the sample, slows it down, but it sounds really, really clean. Notice there are no artifacts or glitches from it slowing down this much. And I got to slow down a lot right now. Let's go to the max. Yeah, I'm not hearing any glitches. That is awesome. Okay, we got a little bit right there. On the drums. So. Okay, so the drums and percussion get a little glitchy. But this is it without the drums and everything else except the drums and percussion. Sounds amazing. Sounds absolutely amazing. Even the vocals. There's no distortion in that. For it to be that slow, I would expect a lot of artifacts, but I don't hear anything. Now the drums did have some artifacts and some glitchiness in it, but everything else other than that sounds amazing. Let's go back to normal, quantized time. I have no idea what that's gonna do. Absolutely no idea, but let's check it out. So that's giving it kind of like a pumper kind of effect or a pumper kind of sound. I can work with that. I can definitely work with that. I can see some use cases for that. Definitely. All right. So fit to bars. Have no idea what that means either. Let's find out. I know this didn't just squeeze the whole. Hold on. Let me stop this. Cause I'm seeing some stuff. What did it do? Yeah, I see a whole bunch of stuff way up here. I have no idea what it did. Oh, so it squeezed that and it squeezed, don't tell me it, it squeezed the whole entire beat into one bar. Oh, if it did that, that's crazy. <laughs> I believe that's what it did. So this is definitely for a, uh, a singular sample. This is not for what I'm doing right now. All right, so now we got clip start. I see what it does from the look of it. It's trimming it back. Let's try it out. All 
It's crazy how I can do this stuff in real time. Now. This actually sounds pretty interesting. So I would experiment with this one also. I would definitely experiment with this one. Alright, and then the last one in the Time Master is Shift Time. Okay, so basically all that does is, is take things off of the grid. I probably wouldn't use that as much as some of the other ones, but it's definitely cool. Something nice to have, especially if you want to try to add swing to some of the beats and things like that. So I ain't mad at that. Now we're into the level. Yeah, that turns it down. You can probably overdo it with this one. That can be overkill. That's the EQ right there. Low pass filter. gotta say this seeing some of the other videos and thinking about what some of these other softwares can do i was thinking rip x might be a little overrated <laughs> boy was i wrong <laughs> boy was i wrong all right let's try out this compression
Yeah, you can completely crush your sample with this. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can completely crush a sample. And there may be some instances where that might be necessary. Or if you're trying to do something out of the ordinary. Wait, what? Says virtual instruments. I'm seeing it doing something. Not sure what that is. Classic guitars, drums, and one. What? Hold on. Oh, oh, <laughs> what? This just turned everything into a different instrument. That, are you serious right now? <laughs> Man, what is going on? <laughs> this is real. So I got the, the gist of the sound master section. <laughs> that's crazy. That is <laughs> that's crazy. And this is this is a real emotion right now. I'm not even holding y'all up. And now that you're seeing a lot of the stuff the rip patch can do, and it can really do a lot. Once we're done changing everything and manipulating everything the way we want in RipX, we can export these stems out and drop them in the MPC and go straight to work on them. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to go up here to the file menu, export, change our format because I like 24-bit audio, 48 kilohertz, stereo, full rip. Let's separate stems. We can also separate layers. For now, I'm going to go with stems. Let's go ahead and separate stems. We're going to click export. All right, now that we got our stems separated, I'm just going to drop them on the pads and mess around with it. I ain't going to bother chopping it right now. You know what to do if we're going to get into chopping. It's going to be something serious. But I just want to drop them on here and see what they sound like. All right, we're going to go on our program edit real quick now just to make sure that everything is set on polyphonic so we can play all the samples at once. And now once we go to the main menu, if we play all four pads, it should play the beat and it should sound like it normally sounds. some of these individual samples out. So that's pretty dope. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you, this thing is fire. You know what? I'm gonna end the video right here. I'm not even halfway through all of this stuff that I'm playing with over here, but if you look at my face, you look at my face, this is a real emotion. I feel a joy going over me right now, like a kid in a candy store. When you find something and it feels like it's gonna be so fun, that toy that you're gonna play with forever, that, that video game that you always wanted, that you love, like, this is real. This is real. I haven't felt nothing like this playing with, you know, any type of uh, VST or instrument in a long time. This is like way up. I, I don't even want to say it's up here. It is. This is through the roof. This is through the roof. Uh, so, man, I can't even hide my joy right now. I'm, I love this thing. I, I don't know. It's just so much. The, the things that it can do 
is mind blowing for me. Maybe not for some of y'all, but for me, this is it. Coming into it, I thought it was gonna be overrated. Cause I'm looking at other things, like I said earlier, Serato Studio, uh, RX, things that can already do stem separation and all that, but this takes it to an extremely different level. Extremely different level. So there's nothing else to say, there's nothing else to say. Uh, if you want to try it out for yourself, the link will be in the description and it does have a free trial. So you can try it out for free. And hopefully if you do, <laughs> you might get the same joy that I have right now. You know what I'm saying? That's all I got for this video. And as always, I'm out.